I spent my days as a humble worker at 7-Eleven. More specifically, I was a store manager and franchise owner. I was no software engineer or doctor. And while my family did have their opinions on what I did for a living, my job paid rather well. I was a very different man in my past, but deciding to go the route of franchising a store was a more hands-on career path that mostly kept me in check. It was a low stress but high labor job, and that was honestly perfect for me. The job was almost therapeutic to me. It gave me something to take care of, something to look forward to every day. Of course, I couldn't do this alone. Working with me in my daytime shifts were workers Molly and Adam. Molly and Adam were young. They were working there to pay off their college tuition. We all considered ourselves like a family to each other. Molly, Adam, and I grew super close to each other in our time working there. They were like the kids I never had, and this naturally made me a little protective over them. We would always encounter weird or upset customers, and it was usually me who had to stand up for them. I didn't want anything to happen to them. They were so young. Nothing bad had happened to Molly or Adam yet, and I was grateful for that. But one early morning that changed. It was a Tuesday morning. I want to say the incident occurred around 9 a.m. The sun was out and things seemed to be going normal. This time of day was always peaceful. There was usually never any problems. Eventually, a loose dead end pulled into the parking lot. Inside of the car was a rather average looking middle aged man. He stepped out of the car and started filling it with gas. While the pump was going, he then proceeded to the front of the store. As per their training, Molly and Adam greeted him. The man just nodded and started walking around the aisles. He then looped back around the store, approached Molly, and started flirting with her. Molly was visibly uncomfortable, and while I wanted to go to the back of the store and do my inventory lobbying, I couldn't do this, not with a man hitting on Molly like that. Adam, however, told me that he could handle the man if he started acting any weirder, and naturally, I trusted him. I reluctantly stepped in the back room and started counting down and logging all the items that were there. While I was doing this, however, I kept looking back towards the man to see what he was doing. It seemed like the man was looking back at me as well. This was odd for a number of reasons. Customers aren't supposed to be this close to the back of the store, and he kept awkwardly peering in through the utility room. To make things worse, every time I looked back, the man started to try and act busy. It was like he was trying to pass time or look natural for some reason. I stepped out of the room and asked the man if I could help him. He seemed to awkwardly and rudely shun me off and keep pacing around the store pretending like he was looking for something. For some reason, I decided to ignore all these red flags and continue my work in the back. Eventually, while Molly was passing by the back room, she whispered to me that the man was making her very uncomfortable. I told her that once I finished with the shelf I was working on, I would quickly go outside and help her. I essentially told her to hang in there and wait behind Adam. It was super confusing what the man even wanted. He seemed to have stopped flirting with Molly completely and was instead focused on trying to peer through the back door for some reason. As annoying as this was, I just wanted to get through my work. I had one last crate of granola bars to lock down and I didn't want this weird man to stop that, but that's when I heard a commotion coming from the main room. Excuse me sir, you're not allowed to be back there. What are you trying to pull off? Call the police Adam. I heard Molly exclaim right after that. I quickly ran out of the storage room to see what was happening and saw the commotion. The man in the blue car was trying to pull something off. I saw Molly in shock and fear in the corner and Adam with his fists up standing right in front of her. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I asked the man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of place is this? What's he doing back there? What are you guys hiding? Get out of here. The sign clearly says employees only. You expect me to just sit here and let you get away with this? No way in hell. We were all in complete shock. Adam tried to calm the man down, however. Sir, we don't need to get violent, okay? You can just calm down and we don't have to. I don't want to hear another word from you, Psychos. The man snapped back at Adam. Molly started to cry. She was ready to dart out the store. The man then started reaching for his pocket. We had no idea what he was going to pull out. I tackled the man in the back of the shop and screamed at Adam and Molly to just head away and call the police. A few more minutes of us rustling in the utility room occurred. I managed to head like the man but he just kept hitting me off. After a few more minutes of us rustling and fighting in the back, the cops eventually got there. But sadly, they couldn't find him on the scene. We got the man's face on security camera and his car was still at the pumps. We had both his face and his license plate on camera. Despite all this, the police just left. They couldn't find any sign of him 
and they assumed that he just ran out through one of the other back doors. As the cops left, I made sure to dump the man's body right next to the first. As I mentioned before, I was a different man in my past. This job really changed me. It seemed like the man in the blue car clearly noticed the other body I had. Normally, it's pretty well hidden. Not even Molly or Adam could find it, but I guess one of the legs must have been sticking out or something like that while I was moving stuff around. I relooked at the security footage to make sure there was no evidence left behind. It seemed like the man wasn't reaching for a gun or a knife. He was reaching for his phone to call the police. I really didn't want it to be this way. But he knew my secret. The man was now part of my collection. Molly and Adam still have no idea what happened and you bet I'm planning to keep it that way. They can't find out anything about my past. If they did, they'd be shattered. For now, my secret remains safe from the public eye and I will ensure no one remembers that day. For quick background info, I was 12 years old when this occurred. I'm 14 now. I have two younger brothers. For the sake of this story, we'll call them Dylan and Tyler. They share a room on the second floor and the room is at the front of the house with a balcony door facing the street. Straight behind their room is a hallway and my room is on the left of that hallway if you're looking from the front of the house. There's two windows facing the side of my house in my room. At the time of this story, I was in my brother's room watching Tyler play a video game. I think it was Kafed. This will be important later. This took place in mid-July of 2019. It was nearing the end of the day. I and my mom had decided to order in for herself and my dad. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? Well, about 10 minutes later, my mom randomly starts walking in my brother's room and looking at the shutters on the door. Me and my brothers don't really pay any attention until we notice she keeps doing it and she looks much more nervous than normal. My brothers ask what's wrong and my mom surprisingly and she tells us that the delivery driver was sending her really weird messages such as, God is coming. He will come for all who don't believe. Believe and he'll bring you to paradise. Tyler was starting to get nervous, but I was much more confused than anything, but that confusion turned to fear. It's not even three minutes later. This delivery driver was right outside our house, empty handed, screaming and laughing, obviously high off his mind. At this point, Tyler was nearly in tears and I was absolutely horrified, but I didn't do anything. I couldn't do anything, but as quickly as he came, he was gone. My mom filed a complaint with both the restaurant and the delivery service, and the next day she was notified that he had been terminated. That in and of itself wouldn't be that bad, but it gets worse. Now for this next part. I can't confirm that these two events were related, but the timing suggests it was. The day my mom was notified of the delivery driver's termination went on like normal, and around 10 p.m. I was the only person awake. This was pretty customary. My brothers like going to bed early, and I think my parents were asleep, but I can't be sure. Anyways, around that time, I noticed out my window the motion light turn on. At first, I thought it was the neighbors, but I realized soon that it was ours, and the thing about our sensor light is that something pretty noticeable has to trigger it. Something like a mouse wound. I looked outside and I didn't see anything until I looked to my right, just out of the light's radius. That's when I noticed something, someone. Then I realized, someone is in my backyard, and I'm the only one awake. It didn't even occur to me that I could wake up my parents, but instead I dug down under the window, praying whoever was out there didn't see me. I'm honestly astounded that 12 year old me didn't even scream, but I think he noticed me because when I checked again about 5 minutes later he was gone. I'm 99% sure that it was the same guy and he was either scouting out the place or trying to scare us, but thankfully nothing else happened after that. I only remembered this recently because my mom brought it up. All of the memories of it came flooding back, so to the crazy high screening delivery driver that I'm merely positive was trying to break in. I had started door dashing to make some extra money as working a hostess really wasn't paying the bills like it used to. My little sister who's 16 and my mom and I had just moved down here from Phoenix, so this is somewhat of a different area to door dash in than I'm used to. We started off doing a couple of runs around the area until I got a ping that I have a new order. It was for Little Caesars. I pulled up the mat and I headed that way. When we arrived, I had sent in my sister to get the order. While she was in there, I was looking around the parking lot. It was pitch black outside other than my headlights and the store sign. I noticed a white jeep and a few teenage guys getting inside of it. I didn't pay much attention afterwards. 
When my sister got back in the car with the order, I proceeded to the delivery address with my sister talking to me and music blaring. I pulled into the neighborhood that the map took me to. I then turned on the music to look for the house. We stopped in the middle of the street in front of the house not realizing that a guy was coming to my door. Now, he didn't say anything at first. I said, did you order DoorDash? And he said, yeah, with a little hesitation. I looked behind him and I saw that there were two other guys heading towards my driver's side door as well. I didn't notice that they had just pulled into the driveway and they were driving a white Jeep. Before I go any further, my boyfriend has a switchblade knife that he always carries around, so I automatically know the sound of it being opened and closed. After he said yes, I noticed that he got closer to my window and I was looking at my phone about to ask him what name for it was. And when I looked back at him, he was fiddling in his pocket on his right side. He kept looking back and nudging his head forward, kind of an emotion like come here to the other guys. All of a sudden, when I was about to roll my window down to give him his order, I heard the click and that's when my brain just pieced it all together. He gave me a weird look and I said, you know what, I've had enough of this. And I rolled up my window to where there was about an inch until it was closed and then locked all the doors and took off. I didn't hear anything from them. They didn't yell out for us. I was really freaking out and my sister didn't know why I pulled off like that. I explained to her what I heard and then she pieced it all together as well. When I turned off their street, they then called me and said, yeah, this is Mario. And I said, yeah. Are you the guy I just talked to? And he said, yeah. And then I asked him why I heard a switchblade go off in his pocket, but he ignored the question. I asked him again, and it sounded like he was rushing to get into a car. I then pulled off into a curve, and I told him where he could pick up his food and then hung up. We sat at the other end of the street for 10 minutes, and when we went back, the food was still there. We picked up the food again, and I was just gonna call DoorDash and tell them what happened and ask that they get a refund until I saw the teenagers pass by and look straight at me and stop the car. I turned super quickly in the other direction, and I saw one of them get out of the car, then jump back in, and they then turned around and started following us. Now I'm a crazy driver in general, but when someone was following me, my fight or flight kicked in, and I lost them pretty quickly. I called DoorDash and explained to them what happened and made a report. I don't know what those teenagers were up to, but as a female out at night with her little sister, I was terrified. Not just for me, but for my sister. Some of you may think that I was being overdramatic, and maybe they did just want their food, but if you were in my situation, what else could you really do? It was my safety and my sister's. I called up my boyfriend and told him everything that happened, and I couldn't stop shaking for the rest of the drive home. I couldn't ever figure out why they were at Little Caesars and got there before us. I know it was them who was there. Maybe they were following me back. Maybe not. I guess I'll never know. On the other hand though, I didn't call the cops. There probably wasn't much they could have done anyways, except for file a report. But let's just say, I'll never door dash in that area again. I used to occasionally deliver for door dash on the weekends. This happened about a year ago, and at the time door dash was new to my area. Not many people used it, but if you work at the right times you could still make well above minimum wage. It was a Friday night, and I got a request in the app to deliver to a house around 8 miles away. The house was on a deeply wooded back road with absolutely no street lights. Like literally, if you turned your headlights off at this time of the night, you were completely blind. I'd delivered to a house in this area once before, but that was when it was light out, which trust me is a way different scene. I didn't have much for phone service, so it was difficult to find exactly where I needed to be, but after a while I finally found the place. The house seemed pretty similar to a lot of the other houses in the area secluded looking and right on the edge of being able to comfortably call it abandoned. I pulled up to the house and because of the limited visibility I decided to keep my car's headlights on while I dropped off the food at the door. But to do this I had to keep the keys in the ignition and so I did. I figured it wouldn't be the end of the world if I left my car running for an extra 30 seconds. I took the bag of food to the front door, knocked a few times, and waited about 20 seconds when my phone went off. I was getting a call from a block caller ID. I decided to answer it in case it had anything to do with the food I was delivering. It was some man who sounded completely normal. He explained how he was the one who placed the DoorDash order, and he then asked me if I could just bring it to him around back. I was already sketched out as is, and so I told the guy no way. If he wanted this food he needed to come to me up front, but to that the line just went dead. I told myself I'd wait at the front door for one more minute, and if this guy didn't show up I was just going to leave. 
Maybe 30 seconds passed and the guy did show up. The front door opened and I looked at the dude. He was wearing a black ski mask and was just standing there looking at me. I held out the food but he made no reaction. That's when the guy yelled out all right now. Right as he said this, three men also wearing ski masks came sprinting out from around the back of the house towards me. My flight reaction kit didn't immediately and I ran straight to my car. I opened the door, put it in drive, and hand the pedal to the floor in no less than two seconds. The men were able to hit my car a good amount of times before I was able to drive off. With what, I don't know, but something strong enough to break my back passenger side window and make a few other dents. Not even a minute into driving off and I got two back-to-back -back calls from a block caller ID that I can only assume were both from the same guy. I let both calls ring until they stopped. I was shaking uncontrollably and still struggling to regain my composure. But after a few minutes I calmed down enough to call the police and report the incident. And that was that. I don't know what ended up happening and I genuinely don't want to know. I tried to distance myself from the whole situation as much as possible. It's beyond terrifying for me to imagine what those guys had planned for me that night. A part of me thinks it was just to rob me, but another part of me thinks they wanted to kidnap me or worse. So I had this part-time job when I was in high school working as a pizza delivery driver for a large pizza chain. I saw some pretty wild stuff on the job, but only one thing that actually seriously creeped me out. I'm making this routine delivery to some innocuous looking house, but when the guy answers the door he just sort of grabs the pizza, thrusts a fistful of ones in my face, then slams the door behind him. At first I'm just like rude, but then when I count the money, I find that not only has this guy not given me enough for his 20 inch meat lovers, but he's not even bothered to tip me. I've been burned once or twice before when it came to my count, and the difference ended up coming out of my wages, so I was not about to let that nonsense happen a third time. I ended up banging on the guy's door for like a solid 5 minutes before he answered. Like I could see him moving around behind the frosted glass panel, but totally ignoring my knocking. In the end, I'd lose my temper and say something like, hey man, don't try and finesse me out of money. I don't want to have to call the cops, but I will. Boom. Those were the magic words. He comes right up to the front door and opens it up. Not all the way, maybe a third of the way open. This guy is saying sorry a whole lot like almost too much. He's all pale, he's sweating, his hands are shaking as he passes me out of 20, just laying the sorry the whole time, I'm just thinking, what's this guy's problem? But then I catch a glimpse of something in the hallway behind the guy, and suddenly I've got a good idea what the guy's deal was. There's a dark red stain on the wooden floor, maybe the size of the land hole covered, and next to it are what look like all kinds of different cleaning products. I take one quick look at that, then at the guy, and he just slams the door in my face. I'm back in my car and speeding back to the pizza place faster than you could say F that, and as soon as I get there, I call the cops. As it turned out, I had legend interrupted this guy cleaning up a murder, and from what I heard, the guy was having an affair with a high school girl that was like 30 years his junior. She's over at his place while his wife is out of town, orders pizza at some point, then before it even arrives, the guy kills her because she's threatening to ruin his marriage or something. He had no clue that she ordered the pie, panics when I show up at the door, and that's how he got caught. Crazy story, right? But for me, the craziest part isn't so much the whole murderous infidelity thing. It's that before she was murdered, this girl unwittingly kicked off a chain of events that would catch her own killer. I had to go to court a bunch of times too since I was basically the case's star witness, and it was so freaky seeing that guy looking at me when I talked to the prosecutor. He literally killed a girl with his own hands, and there he was giving me death stares. Like I said, I've seen some wild stuff working pizza delivery, but only one thing that gave me nightmares that guy's eyes. I'm 27 and currently out of work. I recently got laid off at my job as the company I worked for was starting to go under. So in an effort to keep up with the bills, I started delivering for Uber Eats part time. A couple of my friends suggested it, and so I figured I'd give it a try until I found another job. To my surprise, it was actually good money. The only thing I didn't like was some of the places the app had me delivered to. I live in a city with a lot of sketchy areas. I try to stay away from those areas while delivering, but there's only so much you can do. This night, Saturday, I got a McDonald's order. I usually don't accept those ones, but this night was strangely dead. Which was weird, Saturday nights are usually the busiest for Uber Eats. Anyway, 
I pick up the order and start heading towards the address I'm given. Instantly, I realized it was not in the best area, but by this point I decided to just suck it up. I pulled up to the house and right away the vibe was off. It was completely dark with not a single light on in the house. Usually there's at least a light on upstairs, or something that would signal someone being awake and waiting for their order, but the house seemed dead. Nevertheless, I put the car in park, turned off the engine, grabbed the order, and started walking towards the door. I walked onto the porch, and as I reached for the front door I saw it. The door was slightly cracked open. I knocked, and as I did, the door opened slightly more. I yelled out that I had a Uber Eats order, and right away some men walked to the front door, like as if he had just been waiting right there. As he got closer, I got a good look at him. Now I'm not one to judge a person by their physical appearance, but this guy was practically covered head to toe in tattoos. The guy looked extremely intimidating, definitely not someone you want to mess with. He had this look of frustration or almost anger on his face. He was staring at me dead in the eyes. I lifted up the bag of food and he grabbed it. The guy then started reaching in his pocket. I figured he was going to give me a tip. But no, before I knew it, the guy was holding a hunting knife and pointing it in my direction. My stomach dropped, realizing the situation I was now in. I was either going to get robbed for everything I had or worst case scenario killed. My mind was now racing. Thinking as fast as I could, I turned around towards my car, screamed at Derek to grab the gun, and put my hand in my pocket to start my car's engine from a button on the key. But there was no Derek, and I was in no way armed, but I figured if I could somehow convince this guy at once, I gave myself a chance to get out of this. All I could do was pray that the threat along with the vehicle starting would be enough to convince this guy I didn't come here alone, and luckily it was. The guy shoved me back and slammed the front door. I ran back to my car and practically tore the door off trying to get in. I got out of there as fast as I could. I would of course end up calling the police, but I never heard anything back about whatever ended up happening. I assumed they didn't find anything and that the guy was long gone by the time they arrived on the scene, but I can't confirm this. If there's one thing I'm sure of is how fortunate I am to own a car with a remote proximity key, as I don't think the guy would have bought the whole act if I didn't start the engine. I still drive for Uber Eats every once in a while but I since started carrying a knife on me at all times.